Hey guys, in today's session, we're gonna talk about fracture management. Now, paramedics will routinely treat patients who have got some type of fracture to a long bone or any other type of bone in the body. Now, paramedic management of fractures really does focus around immobilizing the injury, preventing any further damage, reducing a patient's pain through pain control and immobilization as well as managing the A, Bs and Cs and, and not being too distracted by the actual fracture itself. Okay, so the first thing the paramedic needs to do when they're managing a fracture is to identify it. Now, typical signs and symptoms of fracture include swelling, loss of movement, irregularity in its, in its appearance, um, crepitus, deformity, bruising, um, loss of movement, a patient reports that they're not able to stand on it. So these are all typical signs and symptoms of a fracture. Now, of course, the patient's gonna usually complain of quite a significant amount of pain. And it's in your best interest to effectively evaluate that pain and provide the most appropriate pain relief. Remembering that paramedics usually do have a number of different pain um, management uh, drugs in, in their barrage of, of equipment. So as accurately assessing the, the, the number on a scale of naught to 10 and giving the most appropriate pain relief is also really, really important. Now it's important to also um, assess the location of the fracture. So for example, is it just an isolated long bone fracture such as a tibia or fibia? Uh, and I don't mean just a, an isolated long bone fracture. Or is there any involvement anywhere else? For example, is there any involvement of the, of the knee or the lower limbs or the spine? Do you need to consider spinal immobilization? Or is it just the isolated? Is it just that one location being um, that under, under review? Now, of course, when you're managing this situation, the patients generally won't let you go anywhere near them until you've reassured them, communicated effectively with them, provided the strong pain relief, effectively immobilized the injury, um, using a range of different devices. Now, the typical devices include vacuum splints, which you'll have a play around with in your workshop. You might also find that if it's a fractured femur, you're immobilizing the patient using a CT6 device or a Sega traction device or a Donway device. Get online and take a look at what these devices look like. Ambulance services and private providers of paramedical services do tend to have their own devices and they're usually based around their own personal needs at that given moment in time. So let's just recap then. First and foremost, the paramedic must be able to recognize the fracture. They must be able to maintain a, a sense of um, situational awareness and not be distracted by just the, the fracture. So for example, if there is a hemorrhage control situation, you need to control that first. If there's a situation involving a C-spine, you've got to be able to manage that as a matter of priority. And then finally, when you get to managing the fracture, you need to expose the injury, which is part of your primary survey, take a look at it after you've given some strong pain relief or an appropriate amount of pain relief and keep that injury still, prevent it from being moved, minimizing the injury to the patient um, and basically just reassess, reassess, reassess. So that's a, a whistle stop tour of fracture management. And again, you will have an opportunity to practice management of a fractured injury in the face-to-face -face workshops. My name's Sam Willis, and I look forward to speaking to you again shortly. Thanks, guys.